Hey guys, should you find yourself lucky enough to be playing as House Greyjoy, I wanted to go over their early game strategy, then I wanted to look at their path to victory, and finally I wanted to cover what are the key areas to defend as Greyjoy. A really defining characteristic of Greyjoys is that directly to their south are the Lannisters, with a point of contention being River Run, and then slightly to their north are Starks, with the point of contention being Moat Kaelin. So you could really get some early game aggression going, and this early game aggression seems to be really encouraged because you're highest up on the fiefdom track, which means you break all ties in combat and you get the Valyrian Steel Blade, which gives you a plus one. Combine that with some of the house guards that you have and you can really come out of the gate swinging as Greyjoys like no other house. The downfall of doing this is once you spend those really good house cards, they don't come back for a while, which leaves you really vulnerable to losing the kind of greater war. Round one, you may come out really strong, but as the game goes on, you're going to end up losing ground as you have weaker house cards. To kind of compound this, your primary opponent, Lannister, and to a lesser extent, Stark, they both have high up on the King's Court, which means they're able to muster units. So over the course of the game, they're guaranteed to increase the number of units they have on the board while you're reliant on either bidding or mustering cards coming up. Out of these two, I would really avoid going for Stark because there's really not a lot of great territory up here. You could fight for Moat Kaelin, but there's strong support from Winterfell, White Harbor, and then eventually typically Stark will take the Narrow Sea, which can support Moat Kaelin as well. So it's really not worth the effort going for that early game. This might be worth the effort because Lannisport has a mustering value of two. When you combine that with River Run, which has the same, additionally Sea Guard, and then finally Pike, this is an extremely valuable area to control. Ideally, at the end of round one, we own Flint's Finger, Sea Guard, and River Run. But if the Lannister player is smart enough to really leverage the advantage that they have over us, which is mustering, it may be in our best interest not to attack River Run and start a war with them and instead establishing some sort of agreement. There is a slightly higher than normal chance that we get mustering, and you can take that risk and chance a war with Lannister, but if that mustering doesn't show up, you're in a lot of trouble. So taking a look at the Iron Throne track, both Lannister and Stark are higher up on the track than us. So if we end up playing two March Orders, we'll end up forcing them to commit to two of their March Orders, which allows us a little bit more of a reactionary gameplay. So first up, we're going to do a minus one March Order in Greywater Watch. Then in Pike, it's going to be our primary place to move it, move it. That's going to be our plus zero March Order. Then in the Port of Pike, we're going to do a Consolidate Power, just in case big incurs. That'll help us out a little bit. And then in Iron Man's Bay, we're going to do support here. If you know that you're playing against a really good Lannister player and they're going to do that mustering, I would probably go with a defense order here instead because you just know River Run's not going to be something you're going for. As one of my viewers put it, I could go through flow charts of what Lannisters could do here. But speaking from a general point of view, when you don't see muster get played, like in the situation here, you should be able to take River Run, generally speaking. So I'm going to go ahead and move Greywater Watch Footman back into Pike. This has the added benefit of forcing the Lannister player to play their second march. So if for some reason River Run looks like it's too difficult to take, I can back off. No problem. And let's go ahead and leave a token behind. So this is where I would really have to ask you to make a judgment call. In my opinion, if you have to send anything more than a knight, I might hold off on trying to take River Run and not risk it too much. But otherwise, I would send a footman to Flint's Finger, a footman to Sea Guard, and then send my knight into River Run. Then this is really the perfect outcome for Greyjoy is to be able to take all three of those castles round one. It's just amazing. The only thing better is if Lannister just kind of gave you River Run. The reason this start is so strong is because if mustering comes up, which it's actually a higher than normal chance because the Valyrian Steel Blade Holder, there's a card that'll let you force mustering as well, you get a massive leg up on your opponents. That gives you two, four, six, seven mustering compared to Lannister's two and three. And that really puts you in a position to completely wipe Lannister off the map. And it's, it's kind of brutal to do. I don't typically like being this aggressive, but if you get in a war with Lannister, you need to make sure that it's complete and utter 
devastation. Because if it draws out too long, you end up losing ground to Lannister potentially, or keeping yourself open to other houses kicking you while your cards are down. Going into round two, I would really try to pressure advantage by pushing into the Golden Sound and Lannis Port. If you can manage to take those two locations, it's just a matter of mopping up the rest. That's way easier to do if you get mustering. If you don't get mustering, what I would do is focus on just holding the castles that you have and potentially being a little less aggressive and holding out for as long as you can until the Westeros mustering card shows up or you end up with a bidding going on. In the meantime, you want to use raid orders or attack orders to make sure that Lannister can't get additional troops from Lannisport or Harrenhal through their mustering. I tried really hard to get an example of the AI playing a muster order round one, but it just wasn't happening. What I did get is a good example as to why it's important to play two march orders. See, they moved from Lannisport out into Stony Sep, and now they have a plus one march order and a plus one support order just ready to jump on River Run, bringing them a total attack value of five, six, seven, if I'm doing my math correctly. The funny thing is, is that as long as you move with Greywater Watch first and force them to use that plus one march, you can just move one knight into River Run. And if they put both footmen and the knight in there, you can still win that fight. Guaranteed. For this example purpose though, I do want to show off what would happen if they were mustering. What I would do is Greyjoy. I would take my footman from Greywater Watch and move that back into Iron Man's Bay. Making sure to leave behind a power token to retain control in case there's a supply adjustment that shows up. I want to go ahead and move my knight into Seaguard to take that. And then I'm going to leave behind a footman. That allows me to consolidate power in Pike or if a bid shows up, that means I can start using Pike as an area to muster troops. Now, before I confirm this march, I want to add in how you go about backstabbing Lannister and win. Now, obviously, this is something you're going to have to feel out depending on the game. And like I said in this example, Lannister is mustering. So you really don't want to get into a fight with them. Ideally, you want to call peace and start moving out into the Sunset Sea a little bit and really just trying to hunker down and maintain your forces. The reason being is because you want to keep your good cards in reserve so that Lannister is inclined to go elsewhere and the same with Stark. If you use your good cards too early, you could end up looking like an easy target and you will be an easy target. So what you're really waiting for is to build up enough forces in order to, in the same turn, have someone in the Sunset Sea attack the Golden Sound, forcing Lannister's only retreat option to be Lannisport. The more ships he has there, the better. And then in the same round, attacking Lannisport and taking it. That is the exact move you should do when you're going to backstab Lannister. From there, you're just trying to mop up River Run as a priority and push from there. Ideally, you want to do this during a round where defense orders or support orders can't be played because that's going to work out best for you. And if you can let them go on long enough so that they start a war with Baratheon or Tyrell, that will hopefully give you an ally in the fight against them. And it works out best for you because their most valuable targets are closest to you and the sea. Taking a look at your path to victory, Pike is an obvious castle. Then you're following up with Iron Man's Bay, Sea Guard, and finally, River Run. A lot of people say that you should go and fight the Starks, but in my opinion, going to the Bay of Ice will only really open up one additional castle to you, which is Winterfell, and that's guarded from the right side of the sea through the Shivering Sea along with a lot of other Stark land. So you could take this for the win maybe, but it's really not worth pushing into the Bay of Ice in my opinion. Taking a look to the south, you have the West Summer Sea, which I think is a much better area for you to push into if you're trying to move away from Lannister. That will get you High Garden along with Seafall. So this will stretch your forces into just one additional sea area, but netting you access to two additional castles. And I think it's a better route to go. With that said, I think going south is an okay idea, but I think regardless of when you attack the Lannisters, really your path to victory is Pike, Flint's Finger, Sea Guard, River Run, Lannisport, which puts you at five, and then I would pick up Harrenhal or Moat Kaelin for your sixth and seventh castle. You can switch out some of those castles that you're going for for Crockclaw, 
would be a good one to grab. You can also come down here to Starfall and that may replace Lannisport or Moat Kaelin if you don't want to push too hard into Lannisters or start a fight with the Starks. Moving on to key areas for defense, Iron Man's Bay is an obvious one because this protects Pike, which is a very good place to consolidate power and muster troops because having Iron Man's Bay is all you need to protect raids from there. And it provides support to Flint's Finger, Sea Guard, and River Run. So that means that this one sea area provides support to four neighboring castles. Mmm, gold. Speaking of gold, the Golden Sound is another key area for defense because that will farther reinforce River Run, Atlantis Port, along with preventing raids from Iron Man's Bay. The Sunset Sea is critical because, mainly, you want to just put one ship there in order to prevent someone else from taking it and taking the Golden Sound or Iron Man's Bay through raiding. Your support tokens, which would kind of leave your key areas to defend a bit, well, defenseless. Beyond that, obviously you're going to want to defend Seaguard, River Run, Lannis Port, and Pike. Those are all really valuable targets, and if you can retain them, that's going to make sure that you have a really fantastic game. Looking at the West Summer Sea, I think with your limit of six ships, you're really not going to be able to go down here and use the West Summer Sea as a reliable area to support High Garden and Starfall. You may be able to pop your head down if Tyrell and Martell are looking particularly weak to borrow some of their castles, but I really think overall your best strategy is to go after Lannister. It's just a matter of waiting for the right time to strike. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up icon below and hit that subscribe button as well. And I'd also really appreciate it if you left a comment. I'd really love to hear from you. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.